What's up everybody? This is Professor Ken here, Cinema 9-1. I thought we would start with microphones. So right now what you're hearing is the microphone that is built into the camera that is using to make this video, known as the internal microphone. I might sound a little far away. Um, I might sound normal. Um, but as you will soon find out, you never, ever, ever want to use your camera microphone. It might sound okay right now, but once you hear these other microphones, when we go back to this, it's going to sound like crap. The first thing I'd like you to do is to just listen, and I will do this with you. What you're going to hear is noise in the room. This is what built-in camera microphones are notorious for, picking up just everything in the room, whether you want it or not. So I want you to just sit, maybe shut your eyes, and listen. There's a refrigerator about two feet away from the camera that might be making a noise. There, are, uh, there is a clock or two on the wall with a really loud ticker that is definitely making a noise. So let's just listen to see if you can hear it. Oh, we also have neighbors upstairs, too. So now uh, my trusty wife is going to turn on some YouTube static. So I have a YouTube video that's playing across the room that's 10 hours of television static noise. So let's see if we can hear that. So as a good sound person, you definitely want to make sure all the stuff is turned off or curtailed in some way, if not completely, before you start shooting. Now, what you're going to find out is you can't control everything all the time. So that is where microphone selection comes in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch off the camera microphone and we're going to start playing with the different microphones that you should have in your hands right now for your assignments. Everyone will have a shotgun that looks pretty much like this. Um, most of you will have Sennheiser, a couple of you might have Audio Technical, and a couple of you might have this one, the VidPro XM88. But they are all um, hypercardioid um, microphones which means it's a much more directional. It's still kind of a you know, wide balloon shape, but it's narrower than the cardioid. So it's gonna be picking up less off of the side and more directly in front. Now, there's one little aspect of these microphones that you need to be aware of. While they are directional with picking up whatever's in front, they also pick up a little bit from behind as well which means two things. One, if you're miking somebody and you're standing behind the microphone and whispering to your sound mixer that you think the acting performance is terrible, um, it's going to get picked up because it's picking up what's in front of it as well as what's behind it. Number two, what was one of the great advantages of the dynamic mic that, uh, with its cardioid pattern? does not pick up anything from behind the pickup pattern, which means very little handling noise. This one picks up sound from behind, so if you hold it all like this and move your finger just a touch, it's going to sound like, I don't know, that there's a badger loose in your audio recording. It's just going to be... Um, so that is why you will see when people use shotgun mics, they usually don't mic people with shotgun mics like this. They have the microphones attached to a boom pole, but it's attached to a boom pole through this thing called a shock mount. So as you can see with these shock mounts, there are these crisscross rubber bands. They're pretty tight and they will break on occasion. So if yours have broken, don't worry. We've got a bunch extra in the cage. What you want to do is take your mic and insert it between the, inter the middle intersection 
of both rubber bands, like so. Uh, there we go. So if you look like this, you'll see that it is going right down the middle of the intersection of the rubber, of the rubber bands on this side and this side. And as a result, it just sort of, it's just sort of floating in there. Which means that you are not handling the microphone anymore. You're handling the device that is handling the microphone in a very, um, in what we call, like I said, it's called a shock mount. So it's absorbing any shocks that might come from sudden movement um, of your hand or with the boom pole. So that will help uh, absorb any handling noise that might get into your recording. Take your trusty boom pole right here. And as you'll see on the top, there should be a little screw. And it literally just screws right in. Now it's probably starting to look like something you've seen in all those behind the scenes videos, right? This is what we call the boom mic kit. The, the trusty boom mic kit. Now, the shock mount itself has a little adjuster knob right here that lets you adjust the angle of the shotgun mic. And once, usually people like to have the angle like about like this. You'll see why when you start holding it. Uh, you tighten it. There you go. Now, I know some of you have different shotgun mics than this one. Or, I mean, different boom poles than this one. This particular boom pole has internal wiring, or it's called internal cabling, if you're shopping for a boom pole. Um, internal cabling is pretty handy, because what that means is there's a cable going the, through the inside of the boom pole and out into this XLR cable, which means that you can plug it in to the top just like that. Now we've got the microphone plugged into an XLR cable that's going into the boom pole. So then you take an available uh, XLR cable and plug it into the XLR port that's at the bottom of the boom pole. This comes in handy when you're shooting because you're not dealing with any cable uh, getting, in your, getting in your way. Because what happens uh, with older boom poles that don't have this internal cabling is you will have to plug the cable itself into the shotgun microphone like this and then it's dangling like this, which is very annoying and could also get into the shot if you're trying to mic an actor and you're just out of frame and there's this cable dangling like this. So then what people do is they take the cable and they wrap it like so a few times. See that? And that makes it so the cable is dangling off of the end, similar to how it was when we plugged in there. So if you have a boom pole that does not have internal cabling, you're going to have to attach the shock mount, attach the cable directly to the microphone itself, and then twirl it around the boom pole like this. That way, when you're recording, you hold it like this. Now remember, this is another thing when you do it like this. It requires actually a little more boom operator skill. Your hand is going to be on the cable itself. You should avoid this if you can, but obviously if the cable is wrapped around the whole pole, you're not going to be able to. So what that means is, once you get your hand position, you need to hold it. Because if you're going like this, see how that cable's moving? It's going to translate into that little mysterious badger in the recording sound. Because this cable itself, while it's pretty tough and nicely engineered, it will still transmit noise to the audio recorder if noise is being created by hand rubbing. So you want to get your hand on there on the boom pole like this and then hold it. Don't move it around or scratch your head in the middle of a take and then put your hand back on it because you're going to hear the hand movement. That, that is one reason why these internal cable uh, boom poles are so great 
is because it gives you a little more flexibility with hand handling noise. You still don't want to go like this because if you're wearing a ring, you hear that. You don't want that getting to the recording. But you do have a little more flexibility to kind of stretch your fingers every once in a while because there's no cable that your hand is on top of that could be creating noise. So now I'm going to switch it over so we can hear what it sounds like. This is now the shotgun mic that you are hearing. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So what you're hearing now is my voice. Probably sounds a lot clearer, maybe a lot more natural uh, than the internal mic. Um, it might be good to compare this if you have the ability to quickly rewind to the handheld mic to see how it sounds. or I could just switch over right now. Here is the shotgun mic. Here is the handheld mic. One, two, three. This is the handheld mic. One, two, three. This is the shotgun mic. This is the handheld mic. One, two, three. What's for dinner? This is the shotgun mic, one, two, three. We're having Thai food tonight. So there's a little bit of a difference there. The shotgun mic might sound a little more full than the handheld mic, but when you play with this on your own with your headphones on, you'll really be able to hear the difference because it'll be your own voice. Another thing you're probably hearing is this microphone is much more powerful than the handheld mic. When I had the handheld mic, look at this. This is the dynamic mic. I have to talk this closely to it in order to get a nice, solid recording. As soon as I back away from it, or if I want this mic to be out of frame, uh, it's going to sound a lot more far away and not nearly as good because it's a dynamic mic and proximity to the microphone is key. This microphone is made for being at least maybe about a foot to three feet away from the person that's being mic'd, which means that it, could be, that it could be out of frame and still have a relatively good recording. If I could please get my sound assistant to hold the boom mic and point it at my face. Okay, so what you're seeing, what you should be hearing now is a more, so right now, the yeah. right now the boom microphone should be out of frame and it is picking me up and it should sound much closer and much more natural and much more usable than the handheld mic it's a good i would say two two and a half feet away from my uh from my face right now the sweet spot is a foot and a half or so away from the person who is talking. Um, you can go up to three feet and still get a really good recording. Once you get past three feet, it starts sounding a little bit distant. Um, but as you can see, if you want to have a microphone that is not in frame to pick up great sound, the shotgun is your friend. Now we're actually gonna point the microphone away from my mouth so you can hear the, how directional it is. So let's point it about 30 degrees that way. There we go. I'm talking some more, and I probably should not be as clear and should sound a little more distant. Let's rotate it another 30 degrees that way. One, two, three. Now I should sound really far away, or at least like I'm in the next room. Now let's point it right at my mouth again. One, two, three. This should sound a lot clearer and be a lot more usable. This is where this microphone's weaknesses comes into play. Because it is so directional, it's going to be picking up my voice as well as anything that's behind me, which in this case is the YouTube static. So let's listen closely as the YouTube static plays in the background and the neighbors above us are continue to make noise. I am now going to switch to the handheld mic to see if you could hear the difference in background noise. 
We are now, now on the handheld mic. Another th thing you might be hearing is handling noise. Shotgun mics are extremely sensitive to handling noise. There also could be handling noise from the cables that are wrapped around the boom pole. There could also be handling noise from the internal cabling. If it's a boom pole that's been used a lot, sometimes those tape cables um, are in need of repair. Um, there's so many more potential issues with a boom mic kit setup. So it's good to sort of figure out where the noise is coming from. But the first thing that you should listen for is, is there any noise coming from the room itself? And in this case, there is. It's the YouTube static that's playing behind me. Another thing I should mention, these microphones are phantom powered. That means they will only work if the phantom power feature of your recorder or mixer is turned on and sending 48 volts of power to the microphone through the XLR cable. If phantom power is not turned on on your audio recording or mixing device, the microphone will not work. However, a few of these microphones do have at the end, if you kind of go like this and unscrew it a little bit, a little battery slot. So if for some reason your device that you're recording with does not have phantom power capabilities, you can actually put a mic or battery in the microphone and that will sort of override the phantom power necessity to run the mic. However, most good recorders um, have phantom power capabilities. So you should always make sure that you have it on when you're using a shotgun mic.